So today I did receive my um, diaphragms from Performance Analysis Company over in the States and I have reassembled one of my diaphragms um, and looks like it works well. One of the uh, diaphragms can't be removed um, without breaking that internal assembly. So you actually slice it off and then this thing is pressed in. It's the rearmost one I'm talking about underneath this cap here. And they've got this uh, plastic shield in here, which um, prevents the big spring from cutting up that diaphragm in future. And that actually wasn't the problem on these. It was this front one that was uh, completely destroyed, which looks like this. What had, hap what had happened on mine is this surface here had completely disintegrated. Um, and I don't know how that happens. Maybe it's exposure to ozone and other chemicals in the uh, car environment. Um, the other diaphragm was actually perfect. So that's what that diaphragm looked like as it was removed. It's just the rubber is not even soft anymore. It's just completely destroyed. So I would suspect it's yeah something in the car environment that has eaten that rubber. Um, so technically, at least on my car, I didn't even need to replace that rear one, but screw it, I've got them anyway, so they're going in. Um, and there was one casualty as far as the clips are concerned, this one here. Uh, so one out of four clips is doing nothing around that end cap. Um, and it's still working anyway. I mean, I, it is conceivable that you could actually put a zip tie around here, a zip tie around here, and then zip ties this way in a couple of places to clamp it closed, because there is actually a ridge there for that to sit on if, God forbid, all of your clips snapped off. Um, there's not much of a ridge there, but it is possible. Or you could have some kind of contraption over the rear here, maybe in four places, like an X piece. Um, with cable ties down to this ridge here, and that would secure it together, even if all of the clips were broken off. Someone might be able to come up with a clever solution for that, probably even just using um, metal wire um, and threading the cable ties through that somehow. But anyway, um, this works, it holds vacuum. The middle chamber moves the thing about halfway and this one moves it the whole way. So it's basically two positions it has control over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other half back together. Uh, I'm not gonna show that on camera because it's not that difficult. You just follow the instructions. It tells you step by step what to do. Um, the final step, putting this cover on, you just use your little handheld um, vacuum pump to pull the uh, plunger downwards so that the thing can seat correctly and then you just snap that cap on. If you don't do that it's quite difficult to get that to go back on because the rubber doesn't seat properly. Um, but yeah with the handheld vacuum pump and get that in the precise position, piece of cake. And don't forget to mark um, these three housings because if you don't you got no idea how to put it back together and it is particular for the side of the car that you're installing it on and version of car you're installing it on so just make sure it's um, correct because obviously this um, only goes one way and if that's in the wrong direction um, then these vacuum ports are going to be in the wrong place possibly even fouling something in the interior so very important that you mark these and make sure they go back together exactly as you take them apart. This is what I was talking about with the uh, cable ties, just uh, basically giving it a girdle to hold it together. Um, there was just one clip that was broken, but um, yeah, this holds it together rather nicely. We'll see that this actually still fits in the car. I hope it does.
moment of truth. I have the car running and my tempmatic control panel rigged up. The compressor is running. And yeah, that's what the, uh, the hissing noise is you can hear at the moment. That's refrigerant flow through these two lines here. Um, let's activate the recirc flap. I'll just put the uh, light on the phone. There's not a lot of uh, viewability here, but let's activate the recirc flap. So that's the uh, push button on the tempmatic. I will release that. I'll once again activate that. And release it. nice and smooth operation. Um, what else do I test? Turn off the um, fan completely into the zero position and see what happens then because that's a different thing again. It's hard to turn when it's not actually installed in anything. So that is the zero position. Which is basically doing the same as the recirc. And no more hiss. And that's any position between 0 and 1. Again, back to 0. No more hiss. And turn the uh, fan back on. So the compressor starts. And what is it actually doing there? Let's turn the compressor off again. Okay, nothing. That's normal, I guess. So there we have it. These pods have been resurrected. I'm not 100% happy with that one. And of course, of course, it's the one that's the most difficult to replace that had the broken clip. But it's held together with the zip ties. Uh, and I'm pretty confident with that. It's not leaking at all. I've tested it with the hand vacuum pump and obviously it's working perfectly on the car as well. And in any case, it's a hell of a lot better than it was before. So this AC system is now working absolutely perfectly for the first time as far as air distribution is concerned in my ownership. Recirc is working. That has never worked with me. There was just one massive vacuum leak with both of, both of those pods. Now, no more vacuum leaks. And my aspirator motor is working perfectly, of course. Now I have the nightmare task of reinstalling this dash. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I'll leave that for another time, but I'm glad my aircon is now working properly.